Hey everybody, it is Wednesday, October 26, 2022. Welcome to the NFL Fantasy Football Show presented by Subway. Try the Subway Series menu, your pick of 12 irresistible subs. It's me, your man, MG Marcus Grant, joined by Michael F. Florio and the specialist. Give yourselves a round of applause. Woo! A cast of dozens that help us put on this show each and every day, every week, every month. Every year, pretty much. We are so glad that you could be with us today. We got plenty to talk about. And we are past the halfway point now of the fantasy regular season. You mentioned this on Monday's show that at this point, you got a pretty good idea of where your team stands right now and what you need to do to make the playoffs. Or, you know, maybe if you're just going to play spoiler for somebody (laughs) else's year, you know this by now. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm not the type of player who likes to be like, well, this is a lost year for me. So if I'm sitting there at like two and five or something like that, I'm going to throw out some Hail Mary trade offers just to try to salvage the season if I can, and I think that's what the listeners should do too. That's it's never fun to just go down without a fight. No, you don't want to just you know just be a doormat the rest of the way. Like <laughs> I said, even if you can't win at all, you can wreck somebody else's year, and you can point and laugh and say, "I stopped you from winning a championship." So that's what you have to play for. So hopefully, even if your team isn't doing well, you've been hanging with us, and we certainly appreciate it. We got plenty to talk about because it is a Wednesday. We will go through our game previews for the entire weekend slate. Also, give you some trade targets since we're talking about throwing out some hail mary deals. We'll talk about some guys maybe you should try and acquire maybe some guys that you need to send away at this point in the season but as always let's start with our fantasy headlines some news that popped up on our radar on Wednesday morning this according to Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett he says Russell Wilson is trending toward playing Sunday against the Jaguars now Wilson has been dealing with a hamstring injury a reminder by the way that game is being played in London it will kick off at 9 30 a.m eastern so you can set your lineups on Saturday hopefully there are no Camara like surprise inactives but in the meantime Russ is back at least it appears he's going to be back. So, Florio, do you trust starting any Broncos now? Uh, if I have a choice, no, I, I would not <laughs> want to. I, I don't think you could trust Russell Wilson. One, he has been playing well. Two, he's very banged up right now. So you always have to worry about him uh, like tweaking that hamstring and getting taken out of the game. Uh, I know no Mike Boone it's looking like, but still that backfield has been very murky right now to trust. Uh, and then... Cortland Sutton had been the one good thing in the passing game, but the last couple of weeks he's been struggling so much. I guess maybe if anyone, Greg Dolchik is there as a, a streaming tight end, but ideally I, I would stay away from the Denver. Yeah, if you can avoid the Broncos, especially this week, there's only two teams on a bye. Now, mind you, it's the Chiefs and Chargers, so that takes yeah. out <laughs> some pretty notable players, but there are only two teams on a bye, so hopefully – your roster and the waiver wire isn't quite as thin this week. I, I might still give Cortland Sutton a little bit of a run just because he's the guy that's getting the targets. And you're right. Greg Dulcich came in off IR and immediately was getting snaps, getting targets. We can pretty much pour one out for Albert O because that's a <laughs> – I, I, I'm saying this from the heart because I was big on the Albert Okuyabunam hype train this year, and I just had to admit I had to – the train was slowing down. I just jumped off and rolled down a hill at this you, point. You were far from alone. I, I thought he was worth uh, taking a flyer on in drafts. Many people did. Uh, but while we're talking about the Broncos, Marcus, how do you feel about on-plane workouts? Uh, not a fan. <laughs> Not at least not if I'm on the plane. Yeah, you know Russell Wilson doing high knees apparently as they they travel <laughs> to London. That's the story. That on an eight hour flight to London, he spent half of the time stretching and working out and doing high knee exercises up and down the aisle as people sleep. Like I, I don't even like it when the person next to me wants to roll up the window shade while There's I'm trying to sleep. Nothing more annoying than when like the whole plane is dark and one random person is like, "Let me see what you see clouds." That's right. it. Like like right. that's all you are see. You, are you four? Have you not seen clouds? <laughs> Before we know what they look like, pull the shade down so we can all go to sleep. Same with you, Russ. I know you're trying to get healthy, but bro, man, just let it rest while people are sleeping. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Some news that happened just after we finished recording our show earlier in the week. The Jets acquired James Robinson in a trade from the Jacksonville Jaguars for a conditional sixth round pick in 2023. It can become a fifth round pick if Robinson rushes for 600 yards this season. So obviously this is a move to fill the void left by Brees Hall in the ACL injury he suffered. Now, Michael Carter is still there, but, you know, we saw Robinson sort of fading to the background in Jacksonville the last few weeks. Does this become, or how do you think this gets split up in New York between Robinson and Michael Carter? So I will will fully admit that right now, until we see anything happen on the field, it is a guessing game, but my thinking is that 
Robinson, who, yes, like you said, he had been fading. And I know a lot of people were like, oh, was that because of the lack of touches? My thinking is the lack of touches was because of a down performance. Like, he was not looking himself these last couple of weeks. He still continues to come back from the worst possible injury in that Achilles. Uh, I'm thinking the groundwork gets split between Carter and Robinson with Carter handling uh, most of the pass work. I mean, he knows the system. He knows his team. He's already been involved. The goal line work is, I think, what's going to really separate the two. I could see that going to James Robinson. But right now, I think they're both kind of more flex options until we get more answers. But I would lean on the side of Carter. I do think Carter's going to get more work, especially early. You mentioned the passing down work. And... I know the Jets have been playing well, but you have to wonder sort of when the other shoe drops at yeah. some point. And if they start trailing, then I think you see more Carter. I also think this offense wanted to have maybe not a 50-50 split between Carter and Brees Hall, but I don't think they anticipated Hall playing so well that he was just going to take everything over. And so I think with Robinson being there, as long as James Robinson is okay and once he picks up the playbook, maybe you see, I'd say, a 60-40 split between the two of them there. But they're both worth having on your roster. This is a week to kind of see how things sort of split out between the two before we make any hard and fast decisions. I could see Carter taking over a lot of the work easier than I could see Robinson doing yeah, so. Yeah, I think that's if fair. That makes sense. I think that's absolutely fair. Other big news that happened earlier in the week. Frank Reich announced that Sam Ellinger will replace Matt Ryan as the Colts starting quarterback for the rest of the year. It was sort of a confusing story because at first it seemed like, well, maybe – Ryan is getting benched because he's injured, and then it came out that, well, no, this has nothing to do with the injury. We were just looking to make a change. So now we're going to see Sam Ellinger, and if you're watching the streaming show, you're going to see nothing but Matt Ryan highlights because <laughs> Sam Ellinger has never thrown a pass in the National Football League. So we literally don't have any highlights of him. So now you talk about a guy who is the ultimate mystery box at quarterback for Indianapolis. How do we feel about their pass catchers? Uh, definitely worried. I, I think Michael Pittman Jr. is talented enough and will see enough volume as, as the go-to wide receiver one there that you could continue to start him. But even him, I thought he was going to be a wide receiver one this year with Matt Ryan. With Ellinger, I'm like, is he, he's more of a two, maybe even getting pushed down to like low-end wide receiver two. Whereas like Alec Pierce was someone that I was getting excited about. Paris Campbell had become a thing these last couple of weeks. I think you can roster those guys, but I don't think you could start them at all right now until we see what this could look like. And this obviously is a move because he's a more mobile quarterback. So I think that hurts as well because he's not going to be looking to get rid of the ball right away. He's not going to look to get rid of the ball right away. It also speaks to the fact that the Colts offensive line, which had been a strength for them the last couple of years, isn't maybe as strong as it used to be. It's frustrating because we were really starting to get into Alec Pierce and Paris Campbell as nice waiver wire options. But as you mentioned, I think right now you just have to take a wait and see. Again, all three of these receivers should be on your roster, but they're not really startable until we know more. The other part of this is, and you've pointed out, Matt Ryan loves throwing to his running backs, yeah. which was going to be a boost for Jonathan Taylor. I mean, I guess maybe Naheem Hines. But if Ellinger is going to run the ball himself... Potentially there are fewer targets there for those running backs, and that's frustrating. Yeah, 100%. I mean, Deion Jackson was getting double-digit targets. Like, right. That, that's not going to be a thing anymore. Don't think that's going to be a thing. It's going to be interesting because that Indy Washington game now features Sam Ellinger versus Taylor Heineke. Just like we all th drew it up in August. <sighs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, love that. I love that gets the air horn. Thanks, guys. So let's bring the mood back up. Let's talk some fantasy heroes of the week. The guy that is going to hopefully carry your team to victory. Who do you think that is in week eight? I think it's a player that you have been very bullish on for weeks now. I think it's Raheem Mostert, who has clearly taken over uh, the Miami Dolphins backfield. Chase Edmonds is, is no longer a thing at all. Uh, Mostert... He's just running very, very well right now. Last week, he played 71% of the snaps, had 16 carries, and what I love is five targets. Uh, went for over 100 yards and a touchdown. Now he gets the Lions, who we know you can run all over. They've allowed the third most fantasy points to running backs this season. We just saw last week Zeke punch it in twice. Tony Pollard had a big day against them. So that sort of volume paired with the fact that he might be the fastest running back in the league, so he's always a, a home run hitter. I think Raheem Mostert is a must-start option this week, and I, I think he has a huge, 
chance of having a very big game. We already knew he was taking over pretty much all the rushing duties there, but if he's going to start to get targets like he did last week, then Chase Edmonds might as well find himself a seat cushion so he can get comfortable on the bench because he just might not play much at all going forward. For me, it's Joe Mixon, and Mixon to this point has been sort of meh. I mean, this is a guy that we were talking about potentially as a first-round draft pick in some leagues, certainly, certainly early second round at the worst. He's barely an RB1 right now. He doesn't have 85 rushing yards so far this season, but he is scoring touchdowns occasionally, and that has sort of helped. But this week, a great matchup on Halloween against the Cleveland Browns, who have been miserable when it comes to stopping the run. I, I think the Bengals' offense is starting to get going, and I think the fact that we're seeing Joe Burrow hit downfield shots to guys like Jamar Chase and T. Higgins only helps stretch out a defense and open some things up for Joe Mixon. So maybe this is the week we can get him over 85 rushing yards. Hey, knock on wood, maybe he gets to a 100 rushing yards in the game so far. This, he hasn't done it so far this season, so hopefully it happens on Monday night, but I like him a lot against the against I, the Cleveland Browns. I love his chances of scoring a touchdown, too. He gets yes. so much volume near the goal line, and the Browns are so weak against that. So hopefully it actually comes around for Joe Mixon. So we're going to talk about the good. we got to talk about the bad. Who is your fantasy villain for the week? This week has been my Kyle Pitts L tour. Like, I, <laughs> I'm just – every show I'm on, I'm like, yeah, I'll take the L for Kyle Pitts. And, no, you're not going to see me get very angry today. If you want to hear me angry, go, go listen to Monday's show. Um, but <laughs> – I just can't do it anymore with Kyle Pitts. Like, uh, they, they were trailing by double figures pretty much the entire game last week. Completed eight passes, attempted 13. From the one-yard line, threw two short to Kyle Pitts to get it in the end zone. I mean, at some point, it's not a Kyle Pitts issue. Kyle Pitts is very good, but it's his quarterback. It's his play caller. It, all of that is setting him up for failure that I don't... I think he's one of those players, Marcus, that's too good to drop, like, in case we see mm -hmm. a quarterback change, but he's not good enough to start. He's just one of those players that, like waste a roster spot on your team he is, right now. He's in fantasy purgatory right now, which is yeah. kind of a bad place to be. Although I was saying, you know, after we spent all offseason hyping him up, and I'm sure, you know, next year we're going to probably do this again, and I think a lot of folks out there are going to be like, we're not listening to you, we're not drafting Kyle Pitts. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be back in on Kyle Pitts next year. I, I'll take him at a discount. I'll take I him at a discount. Already, I already know. I'm going to be back in. He's too good, right? Once they figure out the quarterback situation, he's going to take off, so I'm going to be back in on him. This week, I'm a little bit nervous about C.D. Lamb. I'm not I'm not telling you to sit C.D. Lamb because he is still good. He is still the number one target there in Dallas. I don't like the matchup against the Chicago Bears. The Bears have shown that you can run the football against them, but it's really hard to throw the football against them. And I know we all had a Bailey Zappy party for about 20 <laughs> minutes on Monday night, right? He came in and he scored a couple quick touchdowns. Everybody's like, oh, Mac Jones, you about to lose your job. But then... You know, he came back to earth, and then we're like, oh, yeah, they just have two quarterbacks in New England who are both maybe kind of mid at best. <laughs> I, I do think, though, you're going to see C.D. Lamb sort of struggle this week against the, the Bears defense. So, like I said, I think you're starting him because chances are you don't have a lot of other better options than C.D. Lamb because the ceiling is potentially high, but I think this week the floor is potentially kind of low for him as well, something to just kind of keep in mind this week. Let's turn now to Thursday Night Football, the Ravens and the Buccaneers, which on paper at least seems to be a good matchup. We did actually have a decent Thursday night game last week with we the, did. the Saints and Cardinals. And, and I, I, I'm very excited. Like, this is a fun game to watch. Even if it's not as fun as we had hoped coming in, right. there's a lot we can learn from watching this game. Definitely. The, the Ravens, look, they've been up and down. They're 4-3 and three right now. The Bucks kind of in a tailspin. You should check that game out, though, on uh, Prime Video and NFL Plus, 815 Eastern. So let's start at the quarterback spot. Who has more points in this one, Lamar Jackson or the Pharaoh, Tom Brady? Uh, I'm going to go with Lamar Jackson and his rushing ability there. Both quarterbacks have been struggling as of late, but I'll always take the guy who uh, can throw a 75-yard touchdown pass and run for a 75-yard touchdown pass. Not many quarterbacks can have that potential. That's pretty much why I'm going with Lamar as well. I mean, I feel like this year in the fantasy game of thrones, the Pharaoh... He's getting usurped at this point. I mean, there's so many other quarterbacks who are playing well. And just as you mentioned, Lamar, if he's not doing it with his arm, he'll find a way to do it with his legs. Not something you can say of Tom Brady. We, we've been waiting ever. for a bit for, like, the changing of the guard at quarterback. Mm -hmm. This feels like the year. Like, the older generation oh, yeah. is, is kind of going away and the young guys I mean, are taking over. Between Brady, Rodgers... You know, Stafford to a point, Matt Ryan now getting benched. Even Russ. Russ, the old guard is on the way out, and the new guard is definitely taking over. Let's go to the backfield. Who has more points in this one, Gus Edwards or Leonard Fournette? 
League winner Lenny, yeah. just because of dump off passes. Like this is a guy who legitimately had negative rushing yards a couple weeks ago and still finished as a top ten running back with like almost twenty fantasy points because of all the dump off passes he gets. But also, am I crazy for being a little bit worried about Gus Edwards? Last week was his first game since twenty twenty. There was no limitations on him at all, and now he has a short week against a. I know they were ran all over last week, but on paper, still a tough run, Bucks run defense. Definitely still a tough run defense, and you do worry how does Edwards sort of bounce back after in a short week I, I still sort of like him I would start him as a flex if I had him but I do think Leonard Fournette is the guy who scores more points and I think this is going to sort of put to test that theory of how much more valuable a target is than a rushing attempt because the Bucks can't run the ball they haven't been yeah. able to run the ball all year long but Leonard Fournette has still been certainly very productive fantasy wise meanwhile I don't see Gus Edwards getting a whole lot of targets. He's pretty much going to get carries. I can see them both ending up with maybe a similar number of touches, but I think Leonard Fournette's going to have more points because, again, a target worth more than a carry when it's, it's all said and done. Rashad Bateman did not practice earlier in the week as he deals with a foot injury. Do you trust starting him against the Bucks? No. Um, I, I wish I did uh, on Fantasy Live this week. He was my player on Dropped that I said you should hold <laughs> on to. But I said I would not be starting Bateman. I think the upside is too high to get rid of him. But he hasn't reached double-digit fantasy points since week two. Uh, he's missed time. He hasn't been the same type of receiver since he's come back. My thing with him is, like, I don't like the way they're using him. They're taking a lot of deep shots with him, which is great. But he can also win in the short to intermediate area and then pick up yards after the catch. So I would like to see him get a little bit more usage there first. It's weird you say that too because, and I'm with you, I don't I don't trust starting him this week. If you have to, I get it. But they're sort of using him very similar to how they use Marquise Brown, which kind of like with Hollywood Brown, had hit or miss yeah. results. And I think we've seen that. I mean, Bateman's had one really huge game. Other than that, he's giving you about 50, 60 yards receiving and it's just kind of a decent number. It's you know, 11, 12 fantasy points, nothing spectacular. But again, it's, it's one of those things where the ceiling's not super high. But, you know, the floor, is, the floor is not crazy low. It's just sort of everything's kind of meh with, with Rashad Bateman. And with him being up in the air physically and on a short week, there's just a lot of reasons. Like, he could have a big day, but there's a lot of reasons to get away from A lot him. of reasons to be concerned. Last week was National Tight End Day, which we figured, hey, man, all these big-time oh. tight ends that we love are going to ball out. And you and I had the same number of receiving yards as Mark Andrews. He did have four more rushing yards than the two of us. <laughs> four. That's all you got from Mark Andrews last week. Does he bounce back this week? Yes, he's, he's Mark Andrews. And I want to thank him because I played against Mark Andrews in like three leagues last week. <laughs> so that was really cool. But besides that, like, yeah, like, I mean, he's Mark Andrews. He's one of two tight ends we say you could trust each and every week. He had a bad game. I don't necessarily think it's really all on him. I think it's the fact that Lamar has been struggling. The Ravens offense as a whole just hasn't looked the same, but he's Mark Andrews. He'll bounce back. Not worried about it at all. They will find ways to get him the football. They may force feed him the ball. Who knows? He might even get a carry down near the goal line because the Ravens will do stuff like that every once in a while. So yes, it was disappointing if you got the 0 0.4 points out of Mark Andrews, but you're starting. You're starting. And Who are you starting over Mark Andrews? And Tell instead me. Of giving him a carry, do the Kansas City shuffle pass so right. that Lamar gets the fantasy points too. Let me just start, what, uh, Jelani Woods? Like, you're not starting anybody <laughs> over Mark Andrews, so you're fine. He's going to be okay. <sighs> now that I got that out of my system, let's take a quick break, huh? We're going to come back. We're going to talk some uh, interesting data nuggets. Also continue with our game previews for the week. Stick around for more on the NFL Fantasy Football Show. It's time for Look to the Data, presented by Intel. We got an interesting nugget from our research team about DeAndre Hopkins. Had a 48.3% target share in his first game back in week seven, third highest in a game by a wide receiver this season. He was the wide receiver eight last year, 10 catches, a buck 03 against the Saints. They got the Vikings this week. Does DeAndre Hopkins finish as a top five fantasy wide receiver? Uh, he certainly can. I'm not going to project him to be top five. I, I like him more as like a top 10 guy. But with the usage that he saw, it's not a matchup that I'm really very afraid of. If he continues to see usage like this, almost 50% target share, almost 50% air yard share, almost 50% of his routes in the slot, he could be top five any week. He could be. I, I feel like this is also sort of unsustainable, talking about getting <laughs> half of the targets yeah. and half of the air yards. I don't think that's going to continue to happen, but it is also a reminder that every now and then Kyler Murray gets 
tunnel vision. It's not even tunnel vision. It's like straw vision. Like he's looking through a straw directly at DeAndre Hopkins. And so that is sort of refreshing to see. But I do think you're going to see them spread the football around a little bit more. So while it is certainly in the cards, no pun intended, for DeAndre Hopkins to finish as a top five wide receiver, I don't think it's going to happen this week. Let's get back to our game previews. We will go with the Broncos and the Jaguars. Remember, that game is in London, 9.30 a.m. Eastern time start. That's 6.30 out here on the West Coast. So you're probably better off setting your lineups on Saturday night. But anything else that you want to point out about this game? Yeah, my, my thinking with this one is the only Bronco that many people might be considering starting this week is Cortland Sutton. And if I have other options that I feel comfortable with, I, I would get away from Cortland Sutton this week. Uh, the Jags are, are a decent matchup. They're not great. They're not awful, though. Um, but it's just the fact that the last two games he's been held in single digits. I know last week wasn't with Russell Wilson, but the week before that, uh, Sutton had his worst game of the year with Russ. So I, it's one of those things I wrote in the stardom sit him like he's not a must sit option by any stretch uh, because of the volume that he sees. But if you're in a, a shallower league or if you have another wide receiver on your roster you feel comfortable with, I, I just would make that switch. He's not a must sit, but he's also not a must start yeah. either. He's just kind of in between. So this is definitely a way your option sort of situation. Panthers and the Falcons, which weirdly, if the Panthers win this game and the Bucks lose on Thursday night, your first place team in the NFC South will be the Carolina Panthers. I just want you guys to sit with that for a second. The Carolina <laughs> Panthers could be in first place in the NFC South by the end of the weekend. Last week, we went into the week saying, which Panthers running back do you want? We were both kind of like, ugh, neither. And it turned out to be like, oh, both. <laughs> so who would you rather have this week? Who has the better game, Deontay Foreman or Chuba Hubbard? I'm going to go with Deontay Foreman because, one, Chuba Hubbard is, is banged up. And then, two, the Falcons give up a lot of production on the ground. They're not a team we know that's going to throw the ball and jump out to a huge lead. So as long as it's close, I think Foreman is the one that will get to the opportunities between the 20s, between the tackles. And he's the more explosive runner as well, so I think he brings more upside. He definitely has that touchdown upside for sure. I'm going to be contrarian and say Chuba Hubbard. Now, mind you, this is depending on how, how his injury is, how this, this shakes out this week. But I also think he's the guy who's more likely to catch the, catch the football a little bit more. Now, mind you, neither of these guys is going to make you forget about Christian McCaffrey, <laughs> especially in the passing game. But I do think Hubbard is the guy who gets some more looks there. And... Early on, when that game was still close, it was Hubbard getting a lot of the work before he tweaked his knee. So mm -hmm. I would say, obviously, pending his health this week, I'm going to go I'm gonna go Chuba Hubbard here. But, you know, I think that speaks to how confusing this is. If they have a big game against the Falcons, I would trade him. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is potentially a sell high for one or both of these guys if they play well against Atlanta. But I will also say... You can start DJ Moore this week. And we haven't been able to say that so far this year. It's, it's weird because... It's a little sneak peek. He's going to be in my sleepers column this week. I didn't think he'd be in the sleepers column because at the start of the year, we just figured he was going to be a solid wide receiver two with wide receiver one upside. Then I thought he wouldn't be in the sleepers column because the Panthers offense was just so bad. It was going to be a lost season for him. But last week, he had a season high in receptions, a season high in yards, and a season high in fantasy points. Now, this week, he's got a Falcons defense that's been pretty bad against the pass so far in, in 2022. Also, Christian McCaffrey is gone. Robbie Anderson is gone. There just aren't a whole lot of other pass-catching options there in Carolina. And it looks like P.J. Walker may hold on to the starting quarterback job, and he has definitely been more willing to push the ball downfield than what we've seen from Baker Mayfield so far this season. So welcome back to our lives, DJ Moore. It's nice to have you here. Who would have thought they're, they're – Fourth string quarterback coming into the season <laughs> right? was the one that was going to save the day. Man, we were all like, oh, who's going to win? Be who's going to be the better option between Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold? P.J. Walker. <laughs> that's who. Man, wild. Bears at the Cowboys. The Bears coming off a huge win in Foxborough against the New England Patriots with Justin Fields playing maybe the best game I've seen from him yes. so far in his NFL career. Now they have a much tougher defense to face in the Dallas Cowboys. What do you do here? I think you're beware of David Montgomery. And I took the coward's way out and went beware when I have him as a <laughs> sit in the start sit article. Um, but yesterday on Fantasy Live, I said that Khalil Herbert's ascension is a bad thing for David Montgomery. And, and Adam Rank was like, 
but he Montgomery still scored a touchdown and that that is true and it salvaged his day but if he didn't get that late touchdown he was looking at scoring six fantasy points and like that is a realistic floor now for David Montgomery because Khalil Herbert had double digit carries himself he has been the back getting the targets and Marcus was saying earlier about how much more valuable they are than carries Plus, you mentioned the Cowboys defense. They've allowed the second fewest fantasy points to running backs and just two touchdowns all year. So I think there's a lot working against Montgomery this week. Also, I think what hurt David Montgomery a lot was Justin Fields running the ball as yes. much as he did. And there were a lot of designed runs for Justin Fields. And I think that took a lot of food off Montgomery's plate. By the way, I had on TikTok, by the way, you can follow me at Marcus Grant. That's just a little shameless plug there. I had him as my sit of the week last week on TikTok and somebody jumped in my mentions afterwards and was like, this aged poorly. One, don't do that. That's not fun. Also, predicting the future is hard. And as Florio said, if he doesn't score the touchdown, then I look like I was right. Take that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Dolphins at the Lions. The Lions have not been nearly as fun the last couple of weeks. They got blown out. Then they had a bye. Then they didn't play well against the Cowboys last week. Now they've got the Dolphins. But I still think Josh Reynolds is a sleeper this week in that offense. Yep. I mean, you know, I'm on Ross St. Brown. We'll see if he plays. He says he didn't have a concussion. They took him out as a precaution because he stumbled. And maybe if they back issue, I don't know. That seems to be the, the fallback injury when now guys have a concussion or maybe they don't. That's a whole different conversation for a different time. But either way, DJ Chark's still working his way back. Uh, hopefully every guy everybody's getting healthy. But I still think... There is opportunity for the Lions to get that passing game going again this week. We haven't seen it the last couple of games, and I think Josh Reynolds is going to get plenty of opportunity here. Maybe we get back to the Lions scoring more points again because we haven't seen that in a while. And look, Jared Goff's pushing the ball downfield more than he did last year. So I, I like Josh Reynolds as a sleeper this week. Cardinals and the Vikings. We talked about DeAndre Hopkins and what he might be able to do, but anybody else worth keeping an eye on? I think Irv Smith Jr. is a sleeper. Let Irv this. swerve. Yeah, let him swerve. And uh, uh, shameless, humble brag, I guess, for both of us. <laughs> Last week, we both liked Jawan Johnson, uh, largely because of the matchup against the Cardinals. And he went out, scored two touchdowns, had a huge game. I, I like him this week as well. But Irv Smith Jr. now gets the Cardinals, uh, who have allowed the second most fantasy points, the most catches, the second most yards, and tied for the most touchdowns to the tight end position. Like... Last week, we were like, Jawan Johnson, I know he's a deep name, but it's a great matchup. That's the same thing with Irv Smith Jr. If you're streaming tight ends, look who the Cardinals are playing. It's a, it's a good chance that that player is a good game. Death taxes and the Cardinals getting carved up by opposing tight ends. <laughs> Pretty much count on those things every single year. We are not done with our game previews. We got some more of those coming up after the break. Stay tuned for more on the NFL Fantasy Football Show. Raiders and the Saints, which this game seems kind of interesting i don't know if it's getting a whole lot of attention but something about this makes me think it's going to be kind of fun start chris olave you have to start <laughs> chris olave you don't have a choice but to start chris if you have chris olave you must start chris olave that's it he's been the one guy that week in and week out you can count on in this saints passing game and it hasn't mattered if it's been Jameis winston or andy dalton or even Taysom hill Chris Olave is getting the football. He is getting it downfield. He's an air yards king. He's a reception, a targets king. And the Raiders secondary still is full of holes. If you're not starting Chris Olave, if he's on your roster and you're not starting him, you're doing it wrong. That's all I have to say about that. Patriots and the Jets. We talked about the Jets now adding James Robinson to the backfield, but you're still big on Michael Carter this week. Yeah, I think if you have Michael Carter, either if you got him off of the waiver wire or if you've just been stashing him, this is a week where you could start him. Like in a league where I, I have been stashing him, I, I'm just plugging him. I, yes, granted, I'm weak at running back in that league, so I, I'm plugging him in and it's a big help for my lineup. But even if you are fine at, at running back, if you have a flex spot open or something like that, because James Robinson, one, like we said earlier, hasn't looked like himself, and two, he is just getting acclimated into this Jets offense. So uh, I think Michael Carter will handle a lot of the passing work, hopefully the goal line work, but I just think he's in play this week as a flex option with a higher upside if he gets more of the running back work. He's going to get more of the running back work, and he's still going to get the target, so I think that definitely helps his case there. Steelers and the Eagles, battle of the Keystone State with the Eagles trying to stay undefeated after their bye. I think you got to beware of Deontay Johnson because you talk about guys who've sort of been hanging out in fantasy purgatory. The ceiling has not been very high for Johnson this year. The floor has been 
fairly steady, but it hasn't really been spectacular. He also, when it comes to wide receivers, is near the bottom of the league when it comes to yards per target. They're just not getting him the ball downfield. They're still trying to get it to him a lot. Although, I will say, with Kenny Pickett at quarterback, we're starting to see more Chase Claypool integrated into the passing game as well. We do like George Pickens as more of a chunk play player. So Deontay Johnson just has not had one of those big-time performances that we were used to seeing. And for a guy that we sort of like as, again, a solid wide receiver too, he's been kind of meh so far this year. And against a good Eagles defense, I, you know, if, if you don't have to take the chance, I would probably avoid taking the chance this week. Uh, over to the Titans and the Texans, a battle in the AFC South, which, I mean, you want to talk about divisions that are just oatmeal. It's the AFC <laughs> South right now. Titans and Texans, because the schedule makers said so, what are we doing here? I, I think Brandon Cooks is in play as a start this week. And this is a team that, a game where, like, you know the running backs are in play. And outside of that, there's not a whole lot to get excited for. And Brandon Cooks has been disappointing this year. He's only cracked double digits twice. But despite that, I, I still think he is in play. The Titans have allowed the third most fantasy points to receivers this year. Um, and, and that's both on the season and in the last month. So, like, you can just throw all over this Titans defense. They're up there in touchdowns allowed to receivers as well. Uh, and Cook sees enough volume. And we know he still has enough big playability where... Uh, in a favorable matchup, getting that sort of volume, he could still have a big day. By the way, you were obviously going to be starting Derrick Henry if you have him, yeah. but I was reading this in our research packet over my you know, croissant and coffee this morning that, that Derrick Henry in his last three games against Tennessee, or against Tex uh, Houston, I should say, uh, has gone for 200 yards and multiple touchdowns. So there you go. It's I mean, you're starting like almost 40 fantasy points per game. Right. Like you're starting Derrick Henry anyway, but if you're going against Derrick Henry – Thoughts and prayers this week, because it may not work <laughs> out for you. Commanders at the Colts, as I mentioned, it is the stellar, much-anticipated matchup between Taylor Heineke and Sam Ellinger. Uh, what, are you, what are you expecting for Jonathan Taylor, though, now that we've got Ellinger at quarterback? I'm worried about Jonathan Taylor because the offensive line has not been what it w is supposed to be. So he's not running as effectively on the ground. The Colts also trailing a whole bunch. They've been getting away from the run. What has been saving him has been a lot of those dump offs. And I don't think we're going to get nearly even as half as many with, with the quarterback change. So I still think he's an RB1, but like, I don't know if he's a top five running back right now. I don't know if he's a top five running back, but I will say that I think volume may rule the day for him this week just because obviously with Matt Ryan, things were terrible. That's why he got benched and Ellinger being a black box. And, you know, they, I think, would like to sort of bring him along slowly and, and help him out as much as possible. And so I think for Frank Reich, that means let's go back to the run. It's what worked for us in years past. The, the passing game didn't work out for us this year. So maybe we just see Taylor, even behind a shaky offensive line, get a bunch of carries and maybe – that's sort of what helps. I will also say you can stream the Colts defense in this one because Taylor Heineke, we sort of know who he is. He'll take his shots downfield. He'll also throw the ball to the wrong colored jersey on occasion. And I think that more than anything is going to help out. Throw in the fact that the Washington offensive line has been miserable. Carson Wentz, when he was the starter, was sacked 23 times. Nobody to that point had been sacked more than him. The offensive line didn't get any better just because Taylor Heineke is a quarterback. So if you're looking for a streaming defense, the Colts could be a real good option for you this week. We still got more game previews, including the Packers and the Bills, which on paper seemed like it was going to be great in week eight, and maybe not so much. Stop smiling, Zach Saley. I see you over there. <laughs> We're going to talk about that and plenty more when we come back on the NFL Fantasy Football Show. Jump on in. That seems like a great opportunity, not just to go over and see an NFL game, but to see a Bayern Munich game. I would love to go to a Bundesliga game live. Sadly, I'm not eligible for this. Although maybe, maybe, you know, Michael Grimes or something signs up and wins the contest and he gets to go hang out over there. Anyway, back to our game previews. 49ers at the Rams. That'll be played just over there to my right at SoFi Stadium on Sunday. The Niners still have a seven-game regular season winning streak against the Rams. We won't, talk, we, won't talk, we won't talk about what happened in the playoffs. But in the regular season, the Niners own. What are you doing here for, for this game? I'm starting Christian McCaffrey, and I'm doing so with confidence. I, I know some people might have concerns after last week where he, he played less than 30% of the snaps, had eight carries and two targets. But I'm like, 
The guy had eight carries and two targets and was averaging, at, at, for a stretch, averaging 10 yards a touch fresh off of a plane on a new team like now he's got a week where he actually can learn the playbook more he's gonna get to practice plus the other team going after Christian McCaffrey was the Los Angeles Rams <laughs> if you think that Kyle Shanahan and the Niners don't want to pour some salt into that wound I think you are mistaken so I, I think McCaffrey is gonna look much more like McCaffrey and then uh, real quick I think the Niners defense is very much so in play they're healthy again and no team has been allowed more fantasy points to defenses than the Rams yeah I'm curious to see if the Rams were able to fix some of their issues in the bye week but I, I feel like they had so many I don't think they could quite address all of them by the way the you know McCaffrey played the Rams a couple weeks ago when he was with the Panthers and oh I yeah he had over 100 yards in that game too so now he gets his second crack at them and uh, in about a month actually I think actually three weeks I think it is between the last time they played each other Packers at Bills on Sunday Night Football, and I'm sure when the schedule makers put this together, this looked like a marquee matchup, right? You had Aaron Rodgers and the Packers on one side. You had Josh Allen and the Bills on the other side. To this point, the Bills have lived up to their end of the bargain. The Packers very much have not. It's been a mess offensively. Aaron Rodgers trying little mind games now to see if he can motivate his team. I don't think it's going to work this time, pal. <laughs> Do you trust starting Aaron Jones? And I, I please take off. Can you take off your red and blue glasses yes. for a minute? Do you trust starting Aaron Jones? Aaron Jones is the only Packer I think I would start with much confidence this week because I still think, I, I know he's been kind of boomer bust, but the upside is so high that he can drop 30 on any given game. And even if they're trailing, uh, typically outside of the weird weeks where they decide to throw the ball to A.J. Dillon a bunch, he is their go-to guy in the passing game. So I, I, I think Aaron Jones is in play every week. I think he is, and I think we saw last week they started to throw him the football a little bit more. It, it did not help them win, unfortunately for them. I also think we've seen A.J. Dillon sort of demoted within the, the offense because he's not getting as many snaps or as many touches. So I'm with you. Aaron Jones probably the only startable Packer. And when I say only startable Packer, I mean the only startable Packer because I think you sit Aaron Rodgers this week. I don't think you can play him. He has not given you – I don't think he's had 250 passing yards in a game yet this year. He's not had 17 fantasy points in a game yet this year. And now he's got to deal with one of the toughest, maybe the toughest defense in the league, in the Buffalo Bills. They're going to get after him at the pass rush. He's just – he's not accurate. He's not accurate with the deep ball like we've seen in the past. He can't get anything going with his receivers. It's been a complete mess. He's the QB 15 right now, which means there are probably better options. There may be better streaming options on the waiver wire than Aaron Rodgers in Buffalo against the Bills. I think you can absolutely sit him this week. That gets us to Monday Night Football, the Bengals and the Browns. I said earlier in the show, I like Joe Mixon to have a big week, but anybody else you think can take a big boom this week? Yeah, I think Joe Burrow has earned must-start status each week. Like, last week, he threw for 481 yards and three touchdowns. Like, that is, is such a high ceiling. The week before was 303. In four of his last five games, he's thrown for over 275 yards and multiple passing touchdowns. It's like, it, it could be a game where... Mixon has a huge game, and Burrow doesn't have to throw a lot, but because he has Chase and Higgins, he could still get to 300 and multiple touchdowns on like 30 pass attempts because those guys are such dangerous field stretchers. So with the Bengals, I think you just kind of start everyone. I think you pretty much start everyone too, so I, I'm with you on Joe Burrow. It's nice. They're, they're throwing the deep ball again. They weren't doing that early in the season, and now it and seems to have come back. Even Tyler Boyd is getting in on the phone right? now. Welcome back, Tyler Boyd. <laughs> he's still a good player. I know we yes. don't talk about him a lot, but he's still a good football player, and we were reminded of that last week. Also something to be reminded of, there are two teams on a bye, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Los Angeles Chargers, so that means you're going to be missing a couple of key quarterbacks with Mahomes and Herbert. You're going to be missing Austin Eckler. You're going to be missing Travis Kelsey. Uh, that's just a, a handful of the names that are not available to you this week. Plus... A lot of guys injured. We know Brees Hall is out for the year. Michael Thomas, who knows when he's going to come back at this point. We'll see what's up with Amon Ross St. Brown. So you got some decisions to make. So we're going to help you out with some of our streaming options. And my first one at quarterback is Derek Carr going up against the New Orleans Saints. And early in the year, it looked like the Saints defense might be sort of formidable. But lately, they have been getting gashed. Now, maybe some of that has to do with Marshawn Lattimore being banged up. And we'll see if Lattimore is available this week. But some of it is just teams seem to have figured something out against this Saints defense. And to this point, Derek Carr has been, you know, he's been kind of Derek Carr, right? Where he gives you a decent fantasy number, but he's not really super spectacular. Last week, they didn't need him at all because Josh Jacobs did so much of the heavy lifting. But I think this is a week where 
obviously Derek Carr. Throw the football, spread it around. Devontae Adams, uh, Mac Hollins, maybe Hunter Renfro a little bit, but I think he's worth a streaming option. Uh, any other streamers out there at QB? Yeah, I, I have Derek Carr as a start in my Start Sit article this week, and I also have Danny Dimes as a start. Daniel Jones is a quarterback I think you just want on your roster right now, uh, but I think he's very much so in play this week. I don't think enough people realize he's a top 10 quarterback on the year, and it's largely because he's running more. He has just one game this year with less than 20 rushes yards in three of his last four he's been over 35 that's three free that's equivalent to 75 passing yards and then last week he had 100 rushing yards and a touchdown like he's just doing a lot more with his legs that i like his receivers are getting healthy and starting to step up and then the seahawks like they're they're a fa i know they've been playing better as of late but they are still a favorable matchup so daniel jones someone i like for this week and and moving forward well and a couple weeks ago Seahawks gave up 100 rushing yards to Kyler Murray. Daniel Jones had 100 rushing yards yeah. last week. So that Konami code definitely in effect. Tight end streamers. I'm going with Mike Gesicki. Yeah, Gesicki. And I know this is a guy that we were sort of fading before the season started because he was saying things like, I'm learning how to play tight end, which is not what you want to hear out of a starting tight end. But it seems like they're letting him run more routes. And he's having success. Had a couple of touchdowns recently. And he's got a good matchup against the Lions because we're picking on the Lions pretty much any which way we can. He loves it to his back. It helps that passing game. And Mike Kosicki in play as a streamer. You touched on your streamer earlier in the show. Who is it? Jawan Johnson, someone that we both liked last week. He had the huge game on TNF with the two touchdowns. He caught all five of his targets. But even the week prior to that, he was targeted six times. Uh, he's been playing over 75% of the snaps in each of those two games. So more workload, more consistent volume going his way. Then you mentioned the fact that the, Sa uh, the Saints receivers remained very banged up. And then it's just a good matchup. The Raiders have allowed the fourth most fantasy points to tight ends, which includes six touchdowns tied for the league most with the Cardinals, who he just scored two against last week. So I think there's a lot of reasons. Again, deeper name, but a lot of reasons to stream Jawan Johnson. Very week. much like Jawan Johnson again this week. If you're looking for a defensive streamer, it's the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're taking on... Uh, who are the Jaguars playing this week? They're playing the Broncos. That's right. It's over in London. I forget they're in London because they make a yearly trip to London where they are called the Jaguars. Anyway, <laughs> the point being, I like them against Russell Wilson. I would have liked them against Brett Rippon. I think it sort of says something that when the Broncos were going to go from Wilson to Rippon originally, uh, our friends out in the desert didn't really think that changed the outcome of the game a whole heck of a lot. So I think that says a lot about where the Broncos offense is right now. I think they can get sacks. They can force turnovers. And if you're looking for a streaming defense, I like them this week. We're not done yet. We got some trade targets, players you might want to acquire, players you might want to unload off your roster as we get close to the trade deadline. In fact, that's coming up probably in a few weeks uh, across most fantasy leagues. So we'll help you out in that department next on the NFL Fantasy Football Show. Some big Thanksgiving news. The Jonas Brothers tweeted out they'll be playing the Red Kettle Kickoff Halftime Show for the Giants-Cowboys Thanksgiving game on November 24th. That game kicks off at 3.30 p.m. Central Time, so be sure to watch Kevin, Joe, and Nick Jonas live. You know, while you're getting ready for Thanksgiving dinner and everything, you can uh, check out the Jonas Brothers there. All right, let's talk about some trade targets. Guys you want to trade for, guys you want to trade away as you're trying to help build your roster, either to compete or get ready for the postseason. So who's somebody that folks can trade for? I think Jonathan Taylor is a player that you should be targeting. And yes, you're going to have to still give up a premium player to get him, but it's not like you're going to have to give up a player like the 101 to get him. And I know... A lot of people right now are frustrated with Jonathan Taylor. This past week was his first game over 15 fantasy points, over 13 fantasy points since week one. He's missed time due to injury. He's currently the RB32 in total points this year. And if you drafted him with the first overall pick, yeah, he's been disappointing. You, you probably want to consider trading him right now. But if you didn't you know, draft him and you just acquire him for a discount, you're a lot less invested. Uh, like It's just easier to, to win with a downgraded Jonathan Taylor when you're not using the first overall pick on him. I still think he sees enough volume each week where he's someone that you very much so want on your roster. Yeah, I, I do think people are frustrated. So maybe you can pry him away from a manager who has just had enough. I think you can trade for Travis Etienne as well. And this, I thought this before even the trade 
of James Robinson, but now even more so. And I think the reason you may be able to get away without paying a premium is because while he's getting a lot of volume, getting a lot of opportunity, he still hasn't had one of those huge blow up games, right? He hasn't had a game like we've seen with Kenneth Walker or Brees Hall, you know, one of those Josh Jacobs 30 point games, but he's getting all of the same kind of usage as some of those top level backs. And so if that continues, that big game is coming, but maybe you're able to trade for him from a manager who doesn't necessarily know how much the Jaguars are using him in this offense. They're just seeing that, yeah, it's fine. He's giving you 16, 17 points a game. Sure, that's nice. So maybe you can get a guy who's set to blow up without having to pay a premium for it. And then, you know, a couple weeks from now, you look down the road and say, hey, man, this was a really great deal for me. Player to trade away. Who are we sending off to someone else now? I, I know I'm going to sound like a hater, but I, I think Ezekiel Elliott hater. is still a player you should be looking to get off of your roster. Uh, yes, he's had his two best games in a row, which is exactly why now is the time to trade him. With, with His two best games right now are 15.6 and 17.7 fantasy points. There was a period in time where that was considered a down week for Ezekiel Elliott. Those are also his two best games because he has three touchdowns in the last two games combined. His high in a game without a touchdown this year is 10 fantasy points. That is who Ezekiel Elliott is. He's a low floor running back now that is touchdown dependent. If he doesn't score a touchdown, you're probably looking at single digits. And what also concerns me is last week we saw Tony Pollard play more snaps than Zeke. If that is a trend that continues, I think it's only going to hurt Zeke. I would sell now while he, while his value is still high. More bad news, too. Mike McCarthy saying that Zeke has a knee sprain. Yeah. I would probably leave that part out of your trade negotiations if you're really trying I, to trade I away. don't know how he still finished that game last week. That knee injury looked brutal, looked and rough. he just he was out there. He was still out there. I mean, credit to him because part of part of his appeal, part of his success has been his durability. But yeah. yeah, that was He's got Wolverine blood. He does have Wolverine blood. I say you also got to try to trade away CEH. And I felt like this has sort of been coming for a while. Obviously, the news that Isaiah Pacheco was going to be the starter definitely accelerated, I think, your desire to kind of move on from Edwards Alaire. But I think the thing when you're talking to another manager is that he still has touchdown upside. They're still using him near the goal line. And he did have a touchdown last week, although he only had 32 total yards, which really didn't give him a whole lot of production. But it's kind of salvaged the day a little bit. This is going to continue to be a muddled backfield, right? Pacheco's going to be the starter. Jarek McKinnon's still going to get opportunity. I don't think you want that headache, but because Edward Dallaire does get those touchdown looks, it still gives him a little bit of value. But I think at this point, I don't want anything to do with the Chiefs' backfield. It's just too much and, of a mess. And we all have, you know, the shortest attention spans ever now. So, like, after their bye week, a lot people might forget, forget. like, how frustrating it's been with That's the right. Chiefs running backs. Hey, man, hey, look, it's a, he's a Chief. They score a lot of points. You want him in your own. You want him in your Mahomes. roster. Please. How about, how about we have swapped CEH for Travis Etienne? Let's make that happen. Let's make it happen. <laughs> it's time now for Preparation Eagles Performance, presented by Castrol Edge. This is where we talk about our sleepers of the week. Who you got as yours? I like Wandell Robinson a good amount this week. And I was talking up uh, Daniel Jones earlier, and Wandell Robinson is starting to take over and look like his top target. He's a player that I, I know myself and others liked coming into the year, but then was hurt in week one. We didn't see him again until week six. He had four targets in that game, caught a touchdown, and it was a sign of things to come. Last week, eight targets. He was clearly Daniel Jones' go-to guy, especially because uh, Wandell got a little banged up in the middle of the game, and he had a bunch of volume already up until that point. So I think he is the top target, especially now with like Bellinger out, like the Giants, they're, they're close yard targets are just dropping like flies. So Slayton is the field stretcher. Wandell is going to get a bunch of volume underneath. Definitely like him. I also like Chuba Hubbard. Talked about him a little bit earlier in the show. I think he's the guy who catches more passes. I thought it was notable that he was the guy who kind of got the first crack at it, was getting a lot of work when that game was close. I don't expect the Falcons or the Panthers to really run out and hide in this game. So I think as long as Chuba Hubbard is healthy, I think he has some sleeper potential there. There's a void in Jacksonville. Now that James Robinson is gone, you like the guy who's potentially going to fill that void, huh? Yeah, I think Jermichael Hasty is a sleeper, more so someone that I just want on my roster right now. Uh, Travis Etienne is, is the lead guy and everything, but 
if anything happens, Hasty is the next man up. And we saw a couple weeks ago he had that long breakout run. He was a sleeper a couple of years ago. So I think there's just a little bit of potential there. All right, I'm going to go to the other side of that game and give you Latavius Murray, who we've seen get some opportunities since he was joining the roster. Throw in the fact that Mike Boone is injured, going to miss a few weeks here. I think that makes it just a two-man backfield, which is slightly less confusing. And the Jaguars have shown recently that they can be run on. So Latavius Murray should have some opportunity in this game coming up this week over in London. By the way, as we always say, you can get this show in your podcast feed. All you got to do is subscribe to it. It also gives you five days a week's worth of fantasy content, whether it's the Q&A show, whether it is the Stardom Sidham show. You can just subscribe to one of them. And you'll get all five of them in your feed. You can also check us out in the Fantasy app, on the NFL Fast channels, and at YouTube.com slash NFL Fantasy Football for all of your fantasy goodness. In the meantime, for this show, that is it. We are done. We appreciate you hanging out with the NFL Fantasy Football show presented by Subway. Try the Subway series menu, your pick of 12 irresistible subs. You know the drill. Tell two friends to tell two friends. Rate, review, and remember, if you're not meant to have midnight snacks, why is there a light in the fridge? Be safe. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy week eight, and we'll talk to you next week.